Today, I'm talking about managing your emotions and reactions as a coach. And uh, one of the things that can be quite confronting for people when they first start coaching is dealing with the big emotions that clients can present with and also hearing the details of the trauma or the background that has attributed to the client's current situation and their perspective in life. And often through our culture and society, we learn that there are things that you just don't discuss with people. Right? There's these things that you don't discuss with people uh, that crying and big emotions only happen behind closed doors. And uh, if there's some kind of unhealed trauma from your own past, and, and when I say trauma, that could be uh, just anything that has really been unresolved, okay, that, that triggers. So negative emotions, limiting beliefs, things that uh, are triggering for you in your past. If you've got some of that, and, and that can vary in, in a range of to extent of how much trauma that is, but if you have some of that yourself, being witness to someone else who is in an unresourceful state or who may be abreacting, who may be getting stuck into an emotion and there's a lot of emotion present or they're talking about a situation that is triggering for you, it can very much trigger you personally. And, uh, and through my own experience and my own personal, personal growth journey and, and years of teaching and mentoring coaches and practitioners and therapists, I've got some really good tips on how to manage your own emotions and reactions as a coach. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you right now. So when it comes to managing your own emotions and reactions when you're the coach, you're the practitioner, there are a few key foundational rules and ways of thinking that will allow you to really grow and evolve and become an exceptional coach. And, you know, this is really important on a, on a couple of levels, okay? It's important on a couple of levels. And the first one is it's important for you personally, Okay, it's important for you personally to, uh, personally to be able to manage your own emotions and reactions because clearly you don't want to get triggered in a client session. Okay, you don't want to get triggered by other stuff. It's not a pleasant experience for you. Okay, so you, you want to be able to resolve that for yourself. But secondly, when you're coaching other people, you know, it's really important that you're not reacting to them in a way that's going to make them self-monitor okay because if you like if they say tell you something and you like fully raise your eyebrows and <gasps> gasp they're going to interpret that as some kind of judgment about what they've said okay so it's really important that you 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 are very neutral about what it is that the client's saying and and how they're emoting so that they don't interpret your reaction as some other kind of meaning because it may interfere with what they feel free to uh, or how free they feel to share with you details or they may alter how they think about it or how they express it in reaction to how they think you're reacting. Okay, so it's, it's very important on the, both of these levels that you um, can manage your own uh, emotions and reactions. And in fact, if you go back, you know, quite some time into, you know, um, therapy and things like that, there were doctors who would sit behind their clients, right? They'd sit behind their clients so their clients couldn't see them and they couldn't see their clients. Now, part of that was thought to be because they didn't want their clients to see their reactions so that their, their clients would be more um, free, kind of thinking and free uh, communicating in their thoughts and those kinds of things. But what it also did is it prevented it prevented the therapist or the coach from being able to read all of the communication of the client. There's a whole lot when I'm when I'm working with someone, I'm very I've, I've got very acute sensory acuity, and I'm watching for every little nuance in their face, in their you know eye movements, in their you know muscle um, tone, all those kinds of things that I'm watching 
right? Because sometimes it can be just a very slight movement around their mouth and how they say a particular word or all kinds of things that you can pick up with sensory acuity when you're watching someone. If you're sitting behind them, you can't see any of that, right? So, um, so it's really important that you can see your client to get the full communication that they uh, that they're giving, um, but also to manage your own emotions and reactions so that you don't interfere with that in any way. All right, so that's really important. So there are some key foundations I'm going to uh, go through with you that will really help you in being able to manage your own uh, emotions in your own reactions when you're coaching, when you're a practitioner therapist with your clients. So the first one is to always hold your client in the light of knowing that they are absolutely magnificent and capable of overcoming any challenge should they choose to do so. Okay, that they're much greater than any problem that they have. And, and that what has happened to them in the past or the emotion that they are feeling right now does not define them. It does We don't want to limit them. We don't want to make them a victim because if you're thinking, oh, this poor person, um, they've been so victimized, well, then you're holding them in the light of a victim. And victim mentality is disempowering. Okay, imagining that someone will never recover from what they've been through or, or move past what has happened to them does not serve them okay it doesn't serve them yes you want to have empathy and validate people's feelings and their experience um, and if they want a different future you need to be able to empower them to be stronger than what hurt them okay that you can help them see that they are much greater than anything's happened to them in the past and that the fact that it's in the past proves that Okay, because they've survived, they're here, right? Their life is going on, their life has continued. That wasn't meant to be a defining thing for them. It wasn't meant to be what their life was all about, okay? And the thing is that people can change the meaning of any situation if they're willing to accept the premise that the world is happening for them, not to them, okay? The world is happening for you, not to you. Like there's always something to learn that is empowering for your client, okay? There's always something to learn that's empowering for your client. It could be that they've learned how to enforce their boundaries, right? It could be um, that they've learned, you know, how they want to look after their own children and, and what they'll provide for their own children. It could be that they've learned to speak up for themselves. It could be that they've learned to know that they are a good person despite other people's behaviours. Hey, there's always a learning. And this is the basis of timeline therapy. This is why timeline therapy works so well is because when people get the learning, there's no need for the emotion anymore. The, the emotion served its purpose to say, hey, there was something wrong here. Now you've learned the um, perspective that's more empowering. That gives you more strength. You don't need the emotion anymore. You can let that emotion go. All right. So your job is to help your clients understand how they can live a life with whatever has happened in the past while being in charge of creating how they want to live, right? How they want to think, how they want to feel and be in their world now and into the future. Okay, so that's really important. So we've got to hold that in our mind that this client is a magnificent being. They can overcome anything. They can live the rest of their life in an amazing way and shift the perspective right and, and this is so important and the more people you work with the more that you will be a hundred percent a hundred percent just you know convinced of that okay because I've seen it over and over and again where people come in to see me and they can be crying they can be crying so much that they can't stop crying and some of the most terrible things have happened to them okay people have passed away people have been sick people have abused them all kinds of things Right? And then we go through some processes and literally within two hours, they feel completely different about it. Right, Nothing in the past has changed apart from their perception of it. Right, And when you see this often enough, you, you, it doesn't make sense to, to make anyone a victim. It doesn't make sense to look at anyone as a victim because they, no one's a victim. No one's a victim if they don't want to be. They can choose a different reality. They can choose a different perspective. And when you hold that knowing for people, it's very, very empowering, right? It's very empowering, 
Right. So now the, the second thing that's super important when managing your own emotions and reactions as a coach is continuing to do the work on yourself. Right? There's no getting away from it. You've got to continue to do the work around yourself. If you think it's a good idea that people hire you as a coach, then for that to be a clean projection, you ideally need to be hiring other people as coaches and have your own your own coaches and be doing your own work on yourselves um, because your clients are part of your own projection. Okay, there's no coincidence that you are connected to them. And if you're triggered by their emotion or what they share with you, it's an indication that you have some unresolved issues, okay, which is perfectly normal. Everyone does. It's just not every day that you get confronted with them. And, you know, this is why in a lot of practices that, um, you know, for different practitioners and therapists is that part of their um, registration is requirement that they get supervision, okay, because it's it's an important thing. So as a coach, it's important that you have another coach that you work with, someone that can help you process things, help you process what's been presented to you in your own projection. Okay, this can also relate to how you deal with a client who is um, being difficult in some ways, such as like they're not meeting their part of the agreement. Okay, they might ghost you. They might refuse to do what's been asked of them. And they might project their own problems onto you. That's happened to me before. Okay, where people have been up against their staff, they don't want to face it. And so they start trying to make it my fault. No, I've got real clear boundaries about that. I've got no qualms. I'm very clear about where I'm at and my responsibility to helping my clients. Anyone wants to start making it my fault, I will deal with that very quickly, right? Because it doesn't serve me or them if I take that on board. It doesn't help them move forward if I take that on board. And I value myself enough not to take on somebody else's projections like that, right? I'm very clear about that. Uh, people who are scared to deal with their own staff will do this. Right? They will find different ways. They'll be looking for someone to shift the responsibility of their actions onto. Okay, They might ask for refunds. They might stop paying. They might complain it's too hard, that they don't have time. They'll come up against their boundaries. Right, They'll come up against their boundaries. And this is why boundaries is a big issue. Right? When you're a coach, you can have your own strong boundaries. Be very clear around what those boundaries are. Um, you know, I very much communicate with my clients that there will be times when you're pushed up against it. There'll be times when you feel like not showing up and that's when you need to show up, right? That's when you need to come into your session. That's when you need to be willing to move into a place which makes you feel vulnerable, okay? So because, you know, that's the thing. It's like any layer of growth, if you think about a lobster, right? Any layer of growth, like a lobster, when as it's growing, it will outgrow its shell and it'll have to shed that shell. And until it forms a new shell, it will be vulnerable. It has to go and hide under a rock or do whatever else. And this is the same when you're working with your clients. It's the same for you. Uh, when you get to the boundaries of, of what's familiar or what you feel comfortable in, pushing past that boundary can sometimes be very vulnerable. And so it's important for you as a coach to have really strong boundaries. And to be able to do that because that becomes your that becomes your projection as well. If you're clear about your boundaries and you're doing the work on yourself, you can then expect that with your clients. Okay, so that's really important. Really important. All right. Is to continue work on your own self and have those clear boundaries for yourself. Have curiosity. I'd always say have curiosity. If there's things coming up for you in sessions, great. Right. Of course, you don't want to be in an unresourceful state while you're coaching someone, but you just say to your unconscious mind, unconscious mind, thank you for bringing this to my attention. I'm listening. I'm noticing that there's something here for me and I'm going to deal with that later on. Okay, really important thing and have curiosity. And then just and then afterwards, when you've got the time for yourself or you're with a coach, have some curiosity. Really think about that. What was coming up for me then? What did that mean? What meaning was I creating? What was it reminding me of? What, where did I feel that in my body? And have that real curiosity to find what is there to resolve because it's coming there for a purpose. You're being triggered by stuff. It's there for a purpose. It's your unconscious mind saying, oh, great. Here's an opportunity for us to resolve that thing that I've been sitting with. Okay, so that's really important. 
Now, the third thing um, that I want to cover around managing your own emotions and reactions when you're in a client session is this is a, a, a technique that you can use that is you um, using your imagination, so your active imagination, to create like a shield or a protection for yourself. Okay, so when I first started coaching, like, you know, when I first started doing the personal work for myself, I had a lot of emotion shift. I used to cry very, very easily. Like I had a lot of emotion in my body and it would come out, the way that my body would regulate itself would be by crying. I used to cry a lot. And the more work I did on myself, I shifted all of that, then, you know, the less that I cry, right? And now I don't get like very occasionally, I'll get like, I'll feel a sense of watering in my eyes when I'm coaching someone very occasionally, right? And I'm always curious as, as to what that is. But what I used to do before, um, when, you know, I would feel that things come up more easily for me, right? When I still had more work to do, what I would do is I'd imagine that there was a clear flexi shield type perspex uh, shield between myself and the client that would um, co create a buffer between what's going on with them and what's going on with me. Okay, it was like a, um, you know, it's like a clear, I would imagine this clear perspex field where uh, shield where no energy could come through. Right, no energy could come through. So I wouldn't be so associated into them and what's going on, right? And that would work as a way to help me manage my emotions on the spot. It's not a permanent solution, right? It's a in the moment, if you need something, okay. And then afterwards, okay, what was that? Have the curiosity and resolve it, okay? Another good one I've heard is imagining that you are like Teflon, right? And anything that that client is saying or their emotion just slides right off you like Teflon. It's a similar kind of thing. It's creating that kind of shield that keeps you protected from whatever energy is a match for unresolved energy in you. Okay, because emotion is energy in motion, right? Emotion is energy in motion. So we all have energy. It's just the frequency of it. And if you've got unresolved emotion, it'll have a certain frequency that if someone has a matching frequency, emotion going on, it will trigger that in you, okay? And that's what I'm saying. You want to have curiosity and resolve that stuff. But as a quick fix, if that happens at the time, you can imagine you, it might be a bubble, imagining yourself being in a bubble of calm, of peace, of positivity. It might be the shield. Like I said, it could be that imagining yourself covered in Teflon so everything just slides right off you. But you can create whatever kind of representation works well for you. Okay, whichever one works well for you. All right, so so those are the, these are the three things. Number one, imagine that your client is magnificent. Hold them in the light of them being magnificent beings and that nothing in their past is greater than the magnificence of who they are. And we know that for a fact because they're here today, right? That thing in the past did not kill them, right? It did not end their life. They're here today right? They're here today. So it means they are greater, they are stronger, and they're working with you because they want to find more of that strength. They want to shift that perspective, right? And it can happen very fast. Like I said, this is the power of timeline therapy. When I work with my clients, I've had clients come in saying, um, you know, I remember working with a client and um, I'd done a breakthrough with her. And then 12 months later, um, a lot of stuff had happened in that 12 months. Her, um, her father got really ill and passed away. Um, there was, you know, that whole thing that happened in the world and no one, people couldn't go to work. Uh, her kids had issues. Her uh, husband couldn't go to work and had some kind of health issue. She had a lot of responsibility. She was just in tears. She said, I don't know what to do. I just can't stop crying. Right? I've been seeing my psychologist. So come in for a session, right? Sure enough, she got into my office, could not stop crying, was in a very unresourceful state, a lot of emotion. Timeline therapy, two hours later, smiling happy as larry saying to me um i don't know what i'm going to tell my psychologist when i see them on monday i said tell them come and learn timeline therapy with me <laughs> um because it's it's that's the thing when you shift perspective things change very very fast 
right? And the more work you do with people, the more you see this, the more convinced you are that people are much greater than their problems, right? They're much greater. They're much more magnificent. They're much more powerful, right? Positive emotions and perspectives are way, way more powerful than the negative ones. You can shift very, very fast, okay? So always remembering that people are more magnificent than, um, than their problems. Imagine them in their most magnificent light. The second one, making sure that you continue doing the work on yourself. Be curious. What is coming up for me? What is the purpose of this? Thank your unconscious mind at the time. Obviously, if you're in session, you can't sit there and coach yourself. You've just got to say, thank your unconscious mind for bringing this to my attention. I've acknowledged it. I'm going to deal with that later on. Because okay? sometimes your unconscious mind just needs you to acknowledge what it is and, you know, and then you work on it later on. Okay. And then the third one, as I said, is just imagining yourself either in a safe bubble with a perspex shield that you're Teflon, some kind of imagination that creates that barrier for you that allows you to feel safe and whole behind that shield until you can go and continue and, uh, you know, do some work on yourself. All right. So they're my three key tips for uh, managing your own emotions and reactions while you're working with your clients. So, you know, most importantly, just when you do notice your own emotions and whether they come up when you're working with a client, when you're speaking to a group, whatever it might be, acknowledge them and then afterwards address them with a sense of curiosity. What are they telling you? Welcome the opportunity for your own growth and healing. And when you do, you will become an exceptional coach, practitioner, therapist. The journey just keeps going on.